Let's talk about building and painting your first miniature. My name is Hero Song, and if you're anything like me, you heard about Warhammer from a friend, and then before you knew what happened, you were coming home from the store with a whole box of minis and you had no idea what to do next. If that's you, or if you're just considering if you should try out the hobby, then this video is for you. We're gonna go from this to this by talking about each of the steps I use in the miniature painting process. The steps are building, priming, painting, and basing. Along the way, we'll talk about some of the tools I use for each of these steps, and I'll give very general recommendations on what I think are good items to start with if you haven't bought anything yet. Of course, it's important to note here that especially in this hobby, if you ask five people for their opinion on the best thing to buy, you'll get six different answers. I strongly urge you to look around online and on YouTube for other opinions to help you on your way as you get started. I also want to give a disclaimer that at the time of making this video, I have absolutely no sponsors, nor am I an affiliate of any of the brands I may be mentioning here. All the stuff in this video is genuinely stuff I use and have picked up along my multi-year journey in this hobby. I'm also going to assume that you already have a model that you want to paint. For my part, I'm going to be building and painting a free guild steel helm from Warhammer Age of Sigmar that I got as a freebie from my local Warhammer store. With all that stuff out of the way, let's jump in with step one, building the model. Go ahead and open up whatever box your model came in. Some miniatures will come with building instructions and some won't. Instructions can be helpful for a large model or for if you're building a bunch of small models at the same time, but they aren't strictly necessary. My model didn't come with any instructions, but since it's only one model on the sprue, it's pretty easy to tell what's supposed to be what and what's supposed to go where when we're building the model. We're gonna start by using a pair of hobby sprue cutters and carefully clipping each of the model's bits off of the sprue connectors. Hobby sprue cutters are a tool that you can find at most game stores in the world. It doesn't really matter what brand you get. So long as you only use them on plastic, they should last you basically forever. So you definitely want to have a pair of these for use in the hobby. Sprue cutters will have one edge that's flat and another that's angled. This is so that you can rest the flat edge of the cutters on the model. The cutters will make a clean cut on the flat side and push the unwanted plastic out the other direction. Always make sure to clip at the flat side towards your model. Once you've clipped a bit off the sprue, you'll want to clean it up. Many sprues will have lines on them that are a byproduct of the manufacturing process. And no matter how careful you are, your sprue cutters will usually leave a bit of a mess behind. Personally, I use a small metal file to clean up my models. I use the edge of the file to scrape off the excess plastic and the flat part to do a bit of sanding when necessary. You occasionally will have to press harder than you might think to get the stubborn pieces of sprue off the model. But you also don't want to dig your file so hard into the model that you remove a chunk of the plastic that you want to keep around. My advice here is that you can always go back and remove more plastic, but trying to fix a missing chunk of your model is a lot harder to do. Metal hobby files like these are available at many game stores or on the internet for pretty cheap. This is a really good item to have on hand for your hobby journey. Now that we've cut some bits off the sprue, it's time to assemble our model by gluing the pieces together. We'll start the gluing process by dry fitting our pieces together. Or, in other words, we'll put the pieces together without any glue on them to make sure we know exactly how they're supposed to fit together. I'll use some Gorilla Glue gel to stick my pieces together. I place a little bit of glue on a scrap bit of paper and then use a toothpick to grab a teeny tiny dot of glue. I apply that to the pieces of the model and then I hold them firmly together to make sure they stick. There are many good kinds of glue out there, but I think that starting out with super glue gel or Gorilla Glue gel of some kind is a good idea. It's pretty easy to handle and it will work to stick pretty much any kind of hobby materials together. Some glues, like plastic cement, will actually only work to glue specific kinds of plastic together. They won't work to glue something like a rock on a base, so their application isn't quite as broad across the hobby. If your pieces happen to not stick, or you find that you applied them in the wrong place, no worries. With gel glue, you can pull your pieces apart a bit if you need to, but you want to be careful as the leftover glue can cause extra bumpiness that needs to be cleaned up with your file. Personally, I like to glue pieces together right after I cut them off the sprue. If you cut everything off the sprue and then try and glue everything together, you may find that you have a hard time determining which piece is which. If your model came with instructions, you'll notice that each piece will have a number near it on the sprue somewhere. This number will be shown next to the piece when it's used in the assembly instructions, which can make it easier to determine how things should fit together. After we've glued everything together, it's important to let our model sit for a little while to ensure that the glue is entirely dry before moving on. Something like an hour or two is just fine if you've used gel glue like me. Once the model has sat for a while, 
we can move on to step two, priming the model. It's really important to prime our miniature. Primer provides a base for detail paint to stick to and will help protect our paint job as we handle our model on the table. I usually prime in black Vallejo surface primer since black gives the appearance of deep areas of the model being in shadow. This primer also covers extremely well when you brush it on. Don't forget to give your primer a good shake before you use it. Remember, you should always shake your paints. I squeeze a little bit of primer onto my dollar store palette, which is a great thing to have on hand for your priming needs. I use a relatively large brush that's old and has a crappy point for priming. Use a dabbing motion to get the paint onto the model to limit brush marks and bubbles. It doesn't really matter the shape of the brush. If you don't have any old brushes yet because you're just starting out, I recommend using a large flat brush. You'll see me use multiple kinds of brushes in this priming job. You want to make sure to cover every spot of your model with paint, but also make sure that you're not applying the paint so thickly that you're obscuring detail. A small amount of water in your brush really helps with keeping your paint smooth, and applying multiple thin coats is almost always better than one thick one. There are a ton of options out there for priming. And you'll find that spray cans tend to be an extremely popular option. Spray cans give very good coverage extremely quickly, but they can be a bit tricky to use. If you spray too close to the model, you can obscure details, and if you spray too far away, you might get bad coverage. Also, if you live somewhere like me, this is a common view from your window, which is especially bad given that spray cans don't do well in cold or humid environments. For me, brush on primer is perfect because I know that I will have the same priming experience every time. You'll likely want to do two coats of primer and make sure you let the model dry completely for around an hour or so in between the coats. If you're painting a whole squad, it's a good idea to do them in a bit of an assembly line. That way, by the time you're done painting the first coat on all of your models, the first model you painted should be dry. Your primer should be completely dry before moving on. A good way to test this is to touch your model lightly and confirm that it isn't sticky to the touch. Once it isn't, you should be good to move on to step three, painting the model. Here we are, the moment we've all been waiting for, actually applying some colors and making our model start to look super cool. The first thing we need to do when painting is come up with a color scheme. A simple and great place to start is by looking at references. The references could be box art, other works of fantasy or sci-fi, or even nature itself. I want some nice contrast, so I'll go for a nice deep red and a nice dark blue as bases for the model. I'll also go with some light skin color and a bunch of different browns for the wood and leather bits of the model. I'm going to use a light flesh tone from Games Workshop as the skin for this model. Before using paint, you want to make sure to shake it like crazy, no matter the paint brand and no matter the type of paint. This mixes up all of the different components and pigments in the paint and ensures that your color will look the way you expect it to. I'm going to wet my brush by mixing it around with my water cup and then dry a bit of that water off by wiping it on a paper towel. You always want to pull your brush towards yourself on the paper towel in the same direction as the bristles of your brush so that you don't ruin it. Then. You want to grab a bit of paint out of your paint pot with your brush and place it on your palette. I personally use a wet palette because it holds a bit of moisture under the paint and keeps it usable for longer. But a dollar store palette like the one we used before will do just fine for now. You can load your brush with paint from your palette, making sure that it's covered in paint but doesn't have any large drips hanging off of it. You also want to try and keep paint off of the absolute back part of your brush where the bristles meet the base. We want to start by painting the hardest to reach areas first and then moving on to the easier to reach places later. If you can't decide what's hard to reach, it's a good rule of thumb to go with the largest area first. You want your paint to be slightly watered down, but not so watery that it pools. Maybe a four to one ratio of paint to water. Touch your brush gently to your model to apply the paint. You wanna use the side of your brush when you're painting, not the tip. If you jam the tip of your brush into your model, it will ruin your brush tip. We'll put a few coats of paint onto the face of our model and wait for them to dry in between each coat. Then, once all the coats are dry, we can apply a light brown wash to the face of the model. Be sure to shake your wash thoroughly before you apply it. Washes sometimes do crazy things when they're not shaken up properly. I'll use a thick brush that can hold a lot of wash to apply it to the model. I want to get the brush loaded with wash and touch it to the model. Washes are extremely watery paints that flow super well into the recesses of the model to give the appearances of parts of your model being in shadow. They give a ton of detail and definition in a super easy step that barely takes any time at all. Let the wash do its thing once it's on the model. It will naturally flow towards the deep spots, which is exactly where you want it. If you keep trying to move it around as it dries, the wash might end up looking streaky or apply color in places you don't want it. 
I decided to call the face good on this model with just the base coat and wash. It's relatively obscured by the helmet anyway, and it doesn't look half bad. In some of the later sections, I'll talk about another step that will add a ton of detail pretty simply, but for now we're going to move on to the pants, which is the next biggest and hardest to reach area on the model. I'm going to paint the pants in a dark red color, and then use the same process of painting a few thin coats on the model with the side of my brush and then washing with a dark red wash. I'll continue to use this method as I work my way through the model, moving from harder to reach areas to the easier to reach ones. Along the way, you may make some mistakes and that is totally okay. One of the reasons we want to paint the harder to reach stuff first is because it's a lot easier to paint the lower down areas to completion before painting the higher ones. That way if we do make a mistake, it's more likely that it's on an area that you haven't painted yet, rather than one that you have. If you do accidentally get paint somewhere you don't want it, you can attempt to pull it off your model by wiping the mistake with a super wet brush. The faster you do this and the wetter the paint is, the better it will work. If you still have a mistake at the end, no problem. You can always go in and touch things up in between steps. Personally, I like to do touch-ups usually as they happen so that I don't forget about them. If you don't have any paints, there are a couple of good places that you can start out. Many companies like Games Workshop, which is the company that makes Warhammer, or The Army Painter have paint sets that you can buy when you're starting out. These are often a good deal, and they frequently also contain tools and even in some cases a model or two. Another way of going about it is to buy colors as you go. As you paint more and more armies, you'll find that your paint collection will grow naturally. Or, if you see a cool looking paint at the store, why not grab it? As we talk about buying paints, a question that you may be asking is what paint brand is the best? The true answer to this is an unfortunate one. There is no such thing as a perfect paint or a perfect paint brand. Every brand has some good colors and every brand has some bad colors. For example, Games Workshop makes horrible white paint but their dark brown called Dryad Bark is my absolute favorite paint to work with. It really varies paint by paint. Personally, I choose to buy almost all of my paints from Games Workshop because I value the ability to use their companion color apps to see what their painters used on the box art. Also, I find that I've had a mostly positive experience so far with their paint, so I'm happy to stick with it. That said, I strongly recommend that you do research online and watch some other painting videos to get other input. The Poor Hammer podcast does an awesome episode about what paints to start out with that I'll link in the description. And there's so many videos out there just like that one. A trap that many new painters will fall into is thinking that they want to get the smallest brush possible. This is not the case. You want a brush that's small enough for you to control, but large enough that it can hold some paint in its belly. A good way to think about this is that you shouldn't have to go back to your palette after every single stroke. You should be able to get a fair amount of color onto the model before you have to go back to your palette. Using a tiny brush can allow you to touch tiny details, but you can barely hold any moist paint on the brush. As paint dries on your brush, it becomes harder and sometimes impossible to work with. So you want to make sure that your paint stays relatively moist on the brush. By this point, we've base coated and washed every part of our bottle and it's already looking really good. We could absolutely call the paint job done right now, base it up and put it on the table and not be ashamed. However, there's one more step that we can take in the painting process that doesn't take much time at all, but adds a ton of flair to the model. The technique is called edge highlighting. Edge highlighting is when you put a small amount of a bright color onto the absolute edge of an area of your model. These highlights should be on places that would be getting hit directly by the light source, which in general is going to be above the model. Edge highlighting leather can be especially effective in adding appeal, since leather is relatively shiny in real life. We'll grab a brown color that's a bit lighter than the one we used for the leather previously and get some onto our brush. For edge highlighting, I'd like to water my paint down a little bit less, maybe something like five parts paint to one part water. Try to work slowly and carefully to touch the edge of your brush to the absolute top edges of the model. You can see that it gives the appearance of light catching the model on the edges and adds some nice shine to the paint. Also bear in mind, paint is always brighter when it's wet, so don't worry if you think this is too bright. It will dull down as it dries. I want the red tunic to stand out as well, so I'm going to edge highlight the pieces of red cloth on this model this same way. A little paint on the edge of the brush and lightly touch it to the highest areas of the model. With that done and the paint dry, this guy is starting to look absolutely amazing. If you plan to play games with your model, I personally think it's a really good idea to varnish it. This locks the paint in place and makes it less likely it will chip off or get dirty in the future. I use a matte varnish from Vallejo, apply it to my palette, and put it thickly onto my model, making sure I get some on every part of the model. 
I also try to ensure that I'm not obscuring any detail by applying the varnish too thick. If there's a spot where you think you might have put a bit too much varnish, you can always take your brush and grab some off that spot and move it around a little bit. You must wait for the model to be dry before varnishing, or else you might accidentally spread paint to unwanted places. Varnish itself takes a few hours to dry, but you'll know it's done when your model isn't sticky to the touch anymore. With our paint job done, the only part left now is step four, basing the model. Every Warhammer model comes with a base. A good base accentuates the paint job on the model by adding realism to it without being so detailed that it actually takes focus away from the model itself. We're going to start by using some mud paint, which is basically a really thick paint that has some gravel and sand in it to give it texture. As you apply this, you sort of want to let the mud go on your base thickly. I use a toothpick or an old paintbrush to apply mud to the base of my mini, making sure to clump it a bit around the feet of my model so that it looks like he's sinking a bit into the battlefield mud. In the game, you actually measure distances from the edges of bases, not from the model itself. You can expect your, all of your models to have a base. I actually made a whole video on how to make forest bases, but I really only want to talk about the basics here. So if you want to get more info, feel free to go check that out. You want to let the mud dry for a while. It can take some time depending on how thickly you applied it. I'll then apply something called a tuft to my base, which is basically a bush that's made at model scale. You can get these pretty cheap at any game store or on the internet, and they're super fast and easy way to get your bases to look cool without too much effort. I'll use a dot of our gel glue to apply this to the base. As I mentioned before, one of the benefits of starting with a super glue to attach your models together is that you can use it to stick non-plastic stuff to your model. Now, onto the absolute best part of painting any mini, painting the black ring on the base. You can use some black paint and you can apply it relatively thickly to the edge of your base, trying to ensure that you aren't getting any black paint on the mud of your base. You can do this in any color you want to. There's no rule that says it has to be black. Personally, I think black looks fantastic and I do most of my models these days in black. I love to save this for the absolute end of the painting process because it really causes the model to look done. Since this is the last step, that must mean that we're done. I want to say thank you very much for watching. I really, really appreciate it, especially on this video, which took me an absolute eternity to make. I have a bunch of other painting videos on my channel, and I'm really excited to keep making more. So if you liked what you saw, definitely come back to find more videos about Warhammer painting and painting other miniatures too. If you are enjoying these videos, I would really appreciate you letting me know with a like or a comment. My name is Hero Song, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.